when that crop needs that nutrient, they're applying it. Yes, and if we can help this with a few micronutrients, that gives corn a good day to help with that yield. Let's kick the tires and light the fire. So, let's do it. Hi, welcome to Tailgate Talks with Farmers Co-op Society. I'm Tyson Markos, and this week we're going to be introducing Ben Van Beek to the show. Thanks, Tyson. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about some micronutrients and what you can do with those and how you can easily add those to your post spray and um, when you're doing your corn application. With a majority of farmers finishing up planting and first pass spraying on their cornfields, they're looking to start making decisions on post post-emerge herbicides. When we start post-applying herbicides, it's easy to add in some micronutrients in the tank mix uh, for helping bridge that gap on some of the nutrients that we need. These micronutrients can add uh, yield, um, roughly five bushel an acre we have been seeing, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Um, the other thing nice about it too, Tyson, is that it does not have problems tank mixing. They mix very well with your post-applied uh, products. They don't create cottage cheese or mayonnaise in the tank. Yeah, it's a bad day when you're spraying, you lose pressure and you find out you got a tank full of cottage cheese and some filters to clean out. I may know from experience. Winfield United's data uh, from tissue sampling, if you do about, you know, if you tissue sample, about 60% of those time, times come back where you're uh, uh, deficient in um, manganese, boron, and so forth. So then this um, additives that we can do, these micronutrients, they help uh, bridge that gap and to provide a little bit better yield. And you look at a lot of times that post-applied herbicide is coming up around the V-time growth stage of corn. And from my understanding, that's a pretty important time in that corn's growth cycle, right? That is correct. When you get about that V5, V6, that's when you're determining your ears around uh, the number of, sorry, I wish it was ears, but the number of kernels around that ear, and that's a big um, decision time on helping determine your yield on corn. And you look at adding bushels, the more rows you add to that ear, you're, you gain a lot of yield there by more rows. That, that, that is correct. I mean, and you know, the thing I always like to think about, Tyson, we never want corn to have a bad day. And if we can help this with a few micronutrients, that gives corn a good day to help with that yield. And if you say like, Day one planting, you say your top end yield, there's a chance that corn's got, say, 240 bushel capacity that it can reach if everything goes perfectly. Correct. And micronutrients, by applying the micronutrients, you're helping achieve that, keeping that 240 bushel yield in your bucket or whatever. Th that is correct. In these micronutrients, the thing else to think about Tyson. We can put some of these on with, you know, in the soil with fertilizer, but they're immobile and uh, by spraying it, a micronutrient, it gives you a little boost to help bridge that gap. So you're going to technically, in theory, spoon feed that crop, that micronutrient. That is correct. And you look at the high yield guys, uh, everything I've ever heard or read on them, they're spoon feeding their crop. When that crop needs that nutrient, they're applying it. Yes, that, you know, that spoon feed there, that allows them just a little bit, again, bridge the gap to get help to get that higher yields. If you have any questions about micronutrients or possibly tissue sampling, reach out to your local FCS agronomist. And thank you for taking the time and joining us today. Have a good day. Flipper rail. <laughs> Farmers have wrapped up planting and a majority of them have... <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you. for 